The design for this uh, 1.5 meter light weight slope sawer uh, was inspired by discus launch gliders um, and it has a spring pull system for the rudder and the elevator uh, and that means that there's a little torsion spring on the hinge line there and the servo pulls this little line here to um, activate the, the rudder and the elevator. And that means that um, the servos can be up in the fuselage here uh, and just uh, a line runs up the tail boom to the servos at the front. It means that there's a lot less weight on the tail uh, so the overall weight can be a lot less as well. Uh, this one weighs about 410 grams I think uh, and works really well in anything above five knots. It's made from six mil Depron covered with iron-on uh, document laminating film um, just as an alternative to packing tape uh, and that is excellent. I really really like that stuff. The fuselage is just a 50 millimeter square tube. Um, how long? No idea. And I've just tapered it down at the uh, towards the nose and towards the tail as well. Just for better looks, I suppose. All right, let's see how it's built. Starting with the torsion spring. This is uh, stainless steel wire, I think. It's actually the push rod that came with the Versus discus launch glider. So from a 110 millimeter piece, you bend it into a U-shape with 25 millimeter legs and a 60 millimeter middle section two of them uh, and then we glue it onto the um, hinge line of the rudder and the elevator. It's uh, best to remove a bit of the covering from the Depron so that you can glue straight onto the foam. Just a little patch of ID card for reinforcement over the legs of the torsion spring and that shows how the uh, spring works and making a packing tape hinge, just uh, putting some packing tape on either side of the, uh, the hinge line. The control horn needs to line up with the tail boom because the uh, control line passes through the, through the tail boom up to the servo at the front. The, the tail to boom join needs a little bit of reinforcement, uh, that's a bit of a delicate spot there, so I'm putting a couple of pieces of foam either side of the tail boom and I shape them down as well for a bit more streamlining and uh, cover it over with uh, strong tape as well. The horizontal stabiliser sits up on a, a little pedestal above the tail boom so that the elevator can rotate down and gluing that onto the horizontal stabiliser after removing a little bit of the covering for a bit of extra strength and you need to file a hollow in the bottom of that little pedestal so that the tail boom glues in nicely there for a nice strong join. And you need to uh, make sure that's all level and straight, of course. This is the fuselage where the tail boom joins in, making that as strong as possible with a couple of extra pieces of foam. This is cutting a little hatch just forward of uh, where that tail boom is glued in and I'll, I'll uh, just glue that part in now. This is also where the wing tie downs go as well. Now I'm gluing in the rudder and elevator servos uh, and they uh, have to be positioned so that the lines going down the tail boom have a, have a clear run all the way to the servo arm. And this shows how the, um, the pull line works against the spring to operate the rudder. At the servo end, the lines are wrapped through the uh, servo arm uh, and uh, that allows fine adjustment at the servo end. So I'm clamping the rudder straight so that I can pull up the tension and it um, gets sort of locked off uh, by wrapping around the servo arm bolt. The servos need to be powerful enough to work against that torsion spring. Uh, but these are uh, 9018 Metal Gear servos that worked fine. Elevator line comes out through the side of the boom through a little hole drilled in the side. And it's tensioning up the line for the elevator as well. 
I added some extra packing in there between the servos so that they wouldn't pull away from the sidewalls. So there's the finished fuselage. I've tapered down the front and the, the rear section for a little bit more streamlining as well. And now for the wing build. So I'm using document laminating film. This is the lighter weight stuff. 43 micron or 1.7 mil laminate. But that's easy to use, it just irons on. There's a warm iron and works better than packing tape, easier to apply, no wrinkles. Now I'm marking the leading edge fold and the trailing edge taper. And uh, creating the leading edge dent so that it folds over nicely. And uh, slicing off the trailing edge and sanding that down to the line. And that's where it glues onto the top surface. Now marking where the spar goes, which is 50mm back for this 150mm wing, gluing down the formers which hold the spar in position. And when you're holding this down you really need a, a long piece of timber uh, or a ruler or both to um, hold the joints down flat. And here I'm just trimming off the excess so that the trailing edge isn't too fine. Bring it down to a 6 inch wing or 150 millimeters. Just finishing off the trailing edge with some packing tape. Covering that raw foam. Adds a bit of strength. Now I'm marking out the ailerons uh, and these ones are 35 millimeters by 500 millimeters wide. Cutting them out at the ends and cutting along the hinge but not all the way through and I'll just crack that open and next I'm uh, cutting bevels on the uh, on the wing and the aileron so that the aileron has full movement up and down and doing a tape hinge Now I'm positioning the aileron servos and I've just positioned them so that I don't need a servo extension just to save a bit of weight. The ailerons are strong enough to uh, just be activated from the inner end. I'm just taping the servos in to start off with. I might uh, glue them in eventually. Control horn for the ailerons. remove the uh, laminate covering and glue onto the foam for more strength. And tape over with strong tape for extra reinforcement. Bending a Z bend in the push rod, fitting it, cutting it to length, tightening it up and adjusting it. Uh, some more reinforcing over the front edge of the wing where the rubber bands pass over and it's time to put the wing together. The spar just sits in there, doesn't get glued in. Two halves are just taped together with the servo wires running out the back. And that's plenty strong enough, it means I can pull it apart if I have to later on as well. And there's the wing finished. Now comes the exciting part, putting it together, uh, programming it up, getting the CG right. to throw it. We've only got five knots so it's a great test for a, a slope saw that I wanted to be an ultralight wind performer and it's awesome. I haven't got any other planes that would fly in this wind and this one is just floating beautifully. The wind died down to about three knots later on and it was struggling then but five knots it could rip around. So I'm calling this one a big success, I love it.